strong tornado has been indicated. In fact, the National Weather Service used the term catastrophic. I have gotten a report from Marshalltown. The courthouse lost the clock tower and trees are down all over town. They did put out an all call for first responders to head to Marshalltown. The tornado did go through the town. We got one person requesting an ambulance. I had to leave there. They got somebody trapped in a house down there. Yeah, we had a gas leak on 2nd Avenue in Maine. The fire department is uh, en route to your location. I need a squad car at night. We have an unconfirmed report of emergency personnel perhaps being called to a hospital there. Direct hit right in the middle of the EF3 tornado. I'm sure it was only two or three minutes, but I'm telling you, it seemed like two or three days. Went from a real deep torrential rain in the morning to a really hot, muggy afternoon. My dad is the founder of our company. He passed away in 2006. That day would have been his birthday. July 19th, so that's the first thing I thought when I woke up that morning. Pretty blue skies, a few puffy clouds, not really a, um, an alerting day. Um, didn't have that feeling that most days do. So we've been holding camp here for a very long time. Um, we have built the camp up from uh, a group of 30 kids up to 100 kids now. And so there were 45, half of them in the, in the building at the time with five staff. Door was open, customers in and out, just kind of your everyday average day. Our building had some roof leaks. I came in and saw a lot of buckets on the floor from the night shift. I called a contractor. We need to get this roof fixed. We got to figure out where the water's coming from. I literally said to him, I don't care if you have to strip the siding off the building. Houses are being torn to shreds in Bondurant. Houses are being torn to shreds. Everybody's phones were blowing up with warnings. Oh my God. I was in a business downtown, Marshalltown, at a coffee meeting, a meeting with some citizens. That just, they just went a house. They just went a house. Um, we started getting some reports um, just going. over uh, to our west in Story County of some funnel clouds. Unfreaking believable. Some of our spotters actually went over to, to kind of watch that. I was with them in the western part of the county. Most of these storms will eventually start tracking in a southeasterly direction. Not a lot of evidence on this one yet, but if you look there just to the southwest of Bangor, uh, you can kind of see the notch that we would expect if there is going to be a tornado. That and afternoon so we southwest. had multiple warnings prior to the, what I'm gonna call the real warning. We actually had a little break from at 4.15 because the warnings had lifted. And of course the warnings went off again. We went back downstairs. And then the phone started kind of going off. And okay, so be aware of what's going on. It was sunny out. Everything seemed to be fine. You know, you never think it's gonna happen. But it looked like the storm was headed sort of uh, not towards Marshalltown, more towards Albion. And so my kids were at home and I went home to be with them during the you know, tornado warning. Um, we were reporting back and forth and I advised that from what we were seeing, we probably need to put off the, the tornado sirens. About the time that we put the sirens off, um, National Weather Service was on the, the phone with me and they were putting out then that um, tornado warning at that time, emergency actually at that time. And we do have a serious weather situation developing out to the west of us tonight. We have a strong thunderstorm likely producing a, a large tornado near Marshalltown, Iowa. And a tornado emergency has been issued. The tornado sirens went off. I told everybody, you know, that was on the phone with me to take cover. I was monitoring the police radio and it became evident to me that the tornado was, was headed our way and then it took the turn we didn't want it to right into Marshalltown. So that's when, we, when everything really started stepping up pretty fast. And it looks like the actual tornado has come very close to the center of the town there. I would have to say this is a good sized tornado and capable of doing some serious damage. The gate to gate shear on that storm has reached 130 miles per hour. And uh, that means this is nothing to mess around with. It was just a natural thing. Anytime a tornado siren went off, we would just go downstairs and it was just a regular practice for them. And so they did it beautifully and didn't think anything of it until the lights went off. I looked to the west. It was cloudy, but I didn't see any um, storms. 
Uh, by the time I got into my car, uh, the storm was on top of me. It happened that fast. Finished up with the customer, sent her out the door. Um, I went around to close the door. She got halfway across the street. The wind came up so quick, it blew her to the corner. You could tell it was just growing, um, just from the angle I was at. My staff had called me and said that a tornado warning had been issued for uh, Marshall County and that they honestly believed that we were going to have problems. And I said, what do you mean by that? And they're like, Nick, like we can see the tornado. If I could see Main Street and literally could see the roofs of Main Street being sucked up and down. It would go up and down. There was a lot of debris in the air swirling around and we had a lot of trees going down. It was, there was a lot of activity. What I wanted to do, I was going to uh, get into a safe location where I would be ready to respond and do whatever needed to be done after the storm but I never had the chance to even back out of the parking lot. And then debris started coming down the street, and then all of a sudden bricks started raining down. Most of the windows in my car blew out. I thought for sure I was going over. Um, debris was flying into my car. I looked up and I saw the uh, roof of the Veterans Memorial Coliseum peeling off the building. I got as low as I could in the, into my car and I, I rode that storm out. Thunderous roar in here and then dead silence. And to go from one to the other, from the freight train and then the roar to silence, didn't know if there was something else coming, if it was done, and still it was like it is now. Blue skies, no rain, no nothing. 436, this building was a, a direct hit right in the middle of the EM3 tornado. The change of the pressure, there was a big pop, a lot of dust. It was just this poop of dirt. Um, when the loud noise happened on the roof, is the really hit us and started ripping things off. We heard a crash outside the window. We did back away from the window and the cupola on the top landed just outside the window to the east. Um, but there's a lot of noise happening at that point. Devastation happened in just 300 seconds or so. I got a call just a few minutes later. He said, Mike, the building's gone. The building's blown up. You gotta get here now. And so and he, hung, he hung up on me. And so I told my wife I gotta go. Driving here, which is normally a five minute drive, but it took 20 with all of the down power lines, the trees. The whole time I'm thinking, somebody die, is business functioning? And so it was a tough 20 minutes is what it was. <laughs> not injured, so I immediately uh, uh, got up off the floor of my, my car and I looked up and there was a uh, uh, Asian grocery store across the street from the police department, completely leveled. And one of my police lieutenants was outside and he was trying to help people out. People were climbing out of the debris. Um, I looked around the downtown area and there was just, it was unbelievable the amount of damage that there was. And uh, I, I thought for sure we were going to have fatalities. Staff talked them through it about, um, upon coming out to what they're going to be seeing. There were some tears and some, you know, some upset kids, but they got through it. Uh, but within the last about 10 minutes or so, it's definitely kind of more in a weakening state, more than a strengthening state, which is good news. Some of the things that I'm hearing, and I'm sure you're hearing as well, out of Marshalltown is not very good. Our initial concern was just uh, life, you know, making sure that people were, were safe and starting uh, search and rescue operations and getting people medical attention if they needed it. I had to leave there. They got somebody trapped in a house down here. They need help. We had to make sure that our uh, radio systems and all of our communication systems were operational. We got one person requesting an ambulance. 201 East. Yeah, we had a gas leak on the corner. Yeah. There were natural gas leaks all over um, the downtown area and ultimately in the uh, northeast corner of town. 
So coordinating um, all of those safety efforts to get that shut down with the uh, utility companies was a big job. And we, and we just started calling in resources, started coordinating search and rescue. We started talking about designating a, a, a command center, and typically at that time we would have done it in the basement of the police department. Uh, one problem, we, we realized that there were natural gas leaks all around our building. We quickly found out that everybody was okay. That was kind of relief number one. And then I made my way through the debris of this building to this floor here. And this is the computer control equipment that uh, controls many of the public safety radio systems in Iowa. And so making sure that this floor is working all the time is of critical importance to the public safety needs of, of um, you know, hundreds of thousands of citizens here in Iowa. All parts of all four walls of the building were gone. When I came up here, it was totally exposed to the elements. All of the battery backups were working, the generator was working, and um, by the grace of God, all of the servers were all working. So when I came up here, the ceiling was gone, there was insulation everywhere. My principal engineer said, Mike, I think it's all working. We're one of the law enforcement units we really need to start limiting uh, radio traffic as much as possible. And the radio system up, held up, but again, there was a lot of traffic, so trying to understand who was available, um, what the injuries were. Um, we weren't sure at that point uh, because we did have a lot of physical building damage. Um, we weren't really sure how much we would have for injuries. When all this was initially occurring, and we were setting up our operations center and evacuate our backup 911 center was supposed to go to Raycom. That's how we operate at that point. Okay, I had no idea about their devastation. Okay, um, we just implemented our plan, and I called Mike Miller up and I said, "Hey, we got to evacuate. We're coming." They didn't try to stop us. They were ready for us, and they they made it happen. So uh, they were true heroes in this whole thing. Director 343, the comm center is active at Raycom. We have radios. They had to come over here for their dispatching. And so um, um, it was interesting to see how dispatchers do their job in times of crisis when all they have is a couple of card tables, a whiteboard and some uh, dry erasers, and some portable radios. And so, uh, but this was the Marshall County Dispatch Center for, uh, for about three hours that night. Everybody knew in the back of their head that the hospital was going to probably have to be evacuated. We knew instantly there was going to be structural damage. Uh, I'd say probably within a half hour we had the official green light that we were going to begin the evacuation of the hospital. Uh, we had over 45 ambulance services and ambulances here, and I'd say at least 90% of them were not actually asked by us to come here. They heard us with a direct hit, and that started a lot. They heard actually the media put out word that there was requests for first responders. Uh, so most of those ambulance services in reality shouldn't have been here because we never request them. As much as we um, thought we would be having an overload at our hospital, thank goodness we did not. We did have a lot of um, help come in, uh, mutual aid that came in from other areas. and So we were prepared for that, but thank goodness we didn't have to use that uh, as much as we thought we would have to. Unity Point actually was having a doctor's conference in the area. And so all, all these Unity Point doctors were here in no time. Uh, and that actually helped because part of being with Unity Point is they have the ability to utilize our same equipment systems and everything. Uh, so from a healthcare standpoint, it's pretty shocking how quick it was. You know, parents having to, to park three blocks away in order for them to even get to their children and things, but very emotional when they see their kids. So still hard <laughs> sometimes to, um, to think about it as a mother. So I know my child was in it at daycare, so it brings up a lot of emotion, but it's, it's a good emotion because I know my staff did a great job. But the headline of the hour, no serious injuries in the city of Marshalltown. It was the most beautiful night after the tornado. It was just lovely. It wasn't breezy. We really didn't get much rain. It was odd. That's not the way you think of a storm. And that curfew went into effect at 9 p.m. continues until daybreak tomorrow. They're asking everybody to stay off the roads, off the When the dispatchers left that night, the head dispatcher, Teresa Lang is her name, she's retired, but, but she said, uh, Mike, um, your dad would be really proud of you. You know, we're a family company that my dad started. You know that today's his birthday. 
and so I had forgotten by that time that it was uh, it was his birthday, and uh, like lots of dads, my dad told the same story over and over again. And one of his stories that he told over and over again was that how he designed this building to withstand uh, a direct hit of a tornado. Then, on what would have been his 76th birthday, a tornado directly hit this building. It's almost like he was telling us from from beyond, Michael, I told you so. Back live here at the county courthouse, where earlier you saw a spire taken out by the tornado. The clock now frozen at the time this all happened. I can look at the Marshall County Courthouse uh, as a good view, and of course the dome was completely gone, and it was it was sort of a depressing feeling that night to think, oh my goodness, what are we going to be in for here? And here, what just happened in town? You know, you're sort of in a state of shock. Uh, like, what do you do? The courthouse is the centerpiece of our town, and. Uh... I'm a little biased, but a lot of people will say we have the prettiest, Marshall County has the prettiest courthouse in Iowa. It's where we like to have a lot of the community events. You know, when you look downtown, this is the only grass downtown. I looked at the courthouse, saw that, you know, the top was off, but also a part of the top had pierced the, the roof and water was shooting straight up. And so at the, actually at the angle that I saw it, I thought it was smoke. The chimneys had damage the sprinkler oil lines. So that's what a majority of the inside damage was throughout the building was the water that came from the sprinkler lines. We estimate around 14,000 gallon of water. So it took us a while to get it shut off. It's obviously not a new building. It's 137 years old. So finding the shut off valve is a little different than your house. It was rough, you know, driving into town, driving down Main Street over portions of buildings and bricks and wood and just kind of waving at everybody to get out of my way because everybody was going to look at the courthouse and I was just trying to get here to fix it. There was, uh, there was a lot of people that were here and they were ready to help and they kept saying to me, what can I do? And I kept saying, I'll let you know when I figure it out. Uh, you know, just the enormity, the scale of what's actually happening and what needed to be done. It was, how do I tell some lady with a broom what to do? Was it 45 seconds, 60 seconds that the tornado moved through town and was right here in our spot? And here we are about two years later and we still have a lot of work left to do. So Mother Nature can work much quicker than man can. Behind the scaffolding on Main Street. Also, next Tuesday, the dome is planned to go on top of the building. I'm so immersed into it, and I've been there every day, and it's 98% it's of my focus on my job. It's hard to see how long it's taking. Yes, when you step back and look at it, but if you're really into it, it's there's so much work that goes into something of this scale. You know, we're gonna be close to $30 million insurance claim. And that takes a lot of planning and a lot of research and a lot of communications from many, many people. Yeah! Look at that! It was, it was nice, you know. It, every little bit is, uh, is great to see and the symbolism of it is, I think it means more to other people to say, it's a big step in the right direction. For me, it's, you know, it's another day with just a more visible progress. This was, on this floor was the most devastated floor. All the walls were gone. You can see the picture here where all the walls were, were gone on the outside. Well, there are several decisions, you know, that people made, and not, not even me, because I think I was in a state of shock too, that people made very early on that helped us with our recovery, whether it was Rent all the hotel rooms you can so because people are coming in to help. Buy all the plywood you can to make the building weather tight. Um, call the garbage companies to get the dumpsters here to uh, get um, debris taken away as quickly as possible. All of those little decisions that um, seem very simple but are hard to think about when you're in a state of shock is something like that. 45 minutes, you get to Menards, then you get in there and because I was up here and it took so long, they were already selling out of stuff. So you had um, very few choices for wood at that point and figured, don't know how long this is going to be. I'm getting the best stuff. Spent a little extra. I got the good heavy wood. 
Um, at nine o'clock, we were finally done boarding up the front. This was our way to get in, walk down the scaffolding. So yeah, front of the building and then you came in at the corner. The tornado happened on Thursday and by Monday we were back into you know, back into the swing of things, trying to keep things as normal as possible. Um, so the local school district was gracious enough to open up their doors to us. People told me it would take a year to rebuild this. Well, it took two. And people would tell me it will take X million dollars to fix it. Well, it took twice the much, that much. When I talk to a lot of my peers around the state, the first thing they usually say is, well, you got everything put back together yet? No. I mean, uh, it, unless you've lived through something like this, you don't really understand the, the magnitude of the devastation and how long it truly takes. So we're making progress, we're gonna be okay, but it's gonna take time. Most people are trying the best that they can to stay here, to keep their businesses open here, uh, reopen their businesses here. Are you looking for anything in particular? Main Street will never look the way it did, but hopefully it'll be something better that everybody will enjoy coming down and visiting. And, and checking out the shops. How many places have that sound effect? And those of us who can stick around here and keep it going are thankful and just appreciate everyone who does come in, even if it's just to look and, and not by this time, there might be something next time. We have overcome it and we celebrate it every year um, because we need to acknowledge it every year to make sure that it's, it is a part of our history now and, and it was, be ever known as the F3 tornado that came through Marshalltown that made Marshalltown strong.